Hi everybody, I'm Mike Poland, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, and this is the YVO Monthly Update for September 1st of 2021. Coming to you today from the Upper Geyser Basin in Yellowstone National Park, not far from Old Faithful, and this is Morning Glory Pool in the background behind me. And Morning Glory has a sort of a cautionary tale to tell about how humans can impact the way thermal features look and behave. And Morning Glory used to be a beautiful deep blue color, of course named after the flower. But it was right next to the road that came into the Old Faithful area, so it was very heavily visited. And people would have a tendency to throw things into the pool. Rocks, coins, handkerchiefs, all kinds of random things. In fact, the pool learned the nickname the garbage can for a while. There was so much stuff that was thrown into it. And in fact, this clogged the input, the, the thermal input to the pool. And that resulted in the pool lowering its temperature and thermophilic bacteria began to occupy different parts of it. So the plumbing of the, of the pool changed and that changed the color from that deep blue to this, this sort of colorful pattern that we see today. Now in 1970s, the park actually siphoned out some of the water and cleaned up some of the garbage and they pulled out something like $90 and change, over $86 in pennies alone, as well as over 70 handkerchiefs, all kinds of, of things like that. Uh, and then of course, when they, when they let the water back in, it never really retained that, that came back to that nice deep blue morning glory color. So uh, an un unfortunate tale about how humans can, can alter these thermal features just by, by throwing things in. And that's, of course, why that's not something that we do here in Yellowstone. Okay, well, now let's talk about what happened during the past month in terms of volcano and earthquake activity in the Yellowstone area. Well, those of you that follow Yellowstone seismic activity know that it's been a pretty busy summer. There were a lot of earthquakes located in June and July, especially July, when there were over 1,000 earthquakes that were located. And that is the most number of earthquakes since June of 2017, when there were over 1,100 that were located. Well, August saw a return to background levels of seismicity. The University of Utah Seismograph Stations, the responsible for the operation and maintenance of the Yellowstone Seismic Network, located just 97 earthquakes during the month of August. The largest was a magnitude 3.1 here just to the west of the Norris Geyser Basin. And this occurred on August 20th. Now, this region between Hebgen Lake and Norris sees most of the seismicity in the region, so it's no surprise that that largest earthquake, a small earthquake, 3.1, occurred in that area. There was a little bit of seismicity beneath Yellowstone Lake. This is in the area of July's rather large swarm. Uh, but none of the activity in Yellowstone during the month of August qualifies as a swarm. And that's because none of it occurred in a short period of time all in the, in the same place. So a smattering of earthquakes, sort of aftershocks from the swarm that occurred in July, but no swarm activity in the Yellowstone region during the month of August. We didn't see any changes in deformation in the Yellowstone region. It's been pretty steady over the past several years. This is the GPS station at the White Lake area that's on the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome and the east part of the caldera. Vertical deformation over the last two years with each one of these blue dots indicating the day. Downward trends indicate subsidence and upward trends indicate uplift. And over the past couple of years, we've seen overall subsidence of just a few centimeters, an inch or two. Now, every summer, there's a bit of an interruption in that subsidence pattern. You can see here during the summer of 2020 and again during the summer of 2021. And that's caused by groundwater that percolates down into the subsurface and the surface sort of soaks it up like a sponge. And we get a little bit of uplift or a, a pause in that substance. So that's what's occurring every summer. We're seeing it again in the summer of 2021. It's the same story on the other side of the caldera, the west side of the caldera and the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. This is a GPS site near Old Faithful. Again, the last two years, and each one of these blue dots is one day. And there's this overall substance trend that we can see over the past summer, We've seen a pause in that substance, perhaps even a very slight amount of uplift, maybe just a centimeter, just a fraction of an inch, due to all that groundwater from snowmelt that's percolating into the subsurface. The signal over the past year has gotten a little better at this site because uh, a fire in 2020 resulted in a thinning of the trees in this area. It was done intentionally to reduce the fuel load near Old Faithful, and that resulted in a better signal reaching the GPS antenna and so uh, a cleaner data set. And finally, moving over to the Norris Geyser Basin, we haven't seen any changes in the last uh, year and a half or so. And Norris had been going up from 2015 to 2018, didn't do too much from 2018 to 2019, a little bit of substance here right at the end of 2019. But since early 2020, Norris has been very steady, no real up or down motion in the Norris area. So Norris remains quiet. And then turning to everyone's favorite geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin, Steamboat Geyser, the largest geyser in the world. 
it went an entire month without an eruption. Now, what you're seeing here is the temperature measured in the steamboat outflow channel. And these variations here are just daily variations. It gets warmer during the day and cooler overnight. So no real activity to speak of during these time periods where the temperature is just going up and down with the temperature of the day. Towards the middle and end of the month, we see more of this kind of spiky behavior. And this is caused by an increase in minor eruptive activity at the Steamboat Geyser. And we tend to see an increase in minors before there is a major eruption. So this may suggest that we're on the road to another major eruption. The last one was on July 8th. So it's been well over a month, month and a half, possibly even two months by the time we get one. This is in stark contrast to the previous few years when we had major eruptions every five to 10 days or so. And it really suggests that steamboat activity is waning. It may be going dormant again soon, but perhaps not quite yet. This minor activity suggests we may be on our way to a major eruption sometime in the month of September. Well, that does it for the monthly update. Now, remember, if you have any questions, you can email us anytime at ywobteam, that's all one word, at usgs.gov. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next month. Take care.